Hi, Steve Arnold here, and in this exposure blending Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to merge two bracketed exposures to quickly and easily create a single high dynamic range photo. So this is the first tutorial in a new series that I'm creating that will progress you through from beginner all the way to advanced level exposure blending in Photoshop. So we're going to start off in this video at the beginner level. So if you're relatively new to blending bracketed exposures, or even if this is your first time, then definitely stick around. Or if this is not your first exposure blending rodeo, then check out my playlist containing all my other exposure blending tutorials. It should pop up in the top corner right about now. Link is also in the description. Now the technique that I'm going to show you here involves using layer masks to blend two exposures together in Photoshop. And if layers and masking is completely new to you, then you should first check out my layers and masks for beginners video, which should also pop up in the top corner right about now. If you like this video and you want me to keep on making more, then just let me know by hitting the like button and give this video a thumbs up. Also, you can subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to be notified every time I publish a new video here on YouTube. So as I said, this is a beginner level exposure blending tutorial. If you're already familiar with these techniques, it's going to seem quite uh, quite basic to you. But yeah, I really want to just run through the the most basic of steps, just so that for everyone who's watching who hasn't done this before, you know exactly where to go, and then we can build on this in future videos. So what I've got at the moment is uh, this photo that's on the screen at the moment is my dark exposure. So this was captured at an exposure value that just about captured the detail in the sky there without overexposing the sun. So it was a really hazy morning, that's why the sun kind of, even though the sun is up, it's still not like burning bright, uh, you know, like a, a big bright hot spot in the sky in the image. And I'll just tab across to the second exposure which I've got here, which the in which the sky, as you can see, is overexposed. It's gone virtually pure white, but we've got a lot more brightness here in the foreground so there's a lot more detail and we can see uh, the pool and everything and up here in the cliff uh, we've got a bit more detail as well so the very first thing that we need to do is obviously get these two images into one document so we're going to copy this image here this bright exposure so i'm going to press on the keyboard command or control a to select all uh, and then you can see the marching ants around the edge of the image here. Now I'll copy this by pressing Command or Control C on the keyboard. Now I'll cross into the dark exposure and I'm going to press Command or Control V. And so now we have the background, which was the original image, over here in the layers panel. And we've got layer 1 on top and I can close this second raw file now because we've got both images in the same document. So the idea here is to use layer masks to blend, uh, well either we can choose to work from this bright exposure and blend the darker exposure into it, or we can start from the dark exposure and then blend the bright parts of the bright exposure that we want into it. So I think for this, I mean it's up to you which way you go. Um, I think for this demonstration I'll start with the dark exposure in view and then we'll blend the bright parts into the photo. So activating layer 1 again, I'm just going to add a layer mask uh, using the little icon down here and if I hold on the keyboard uh, on a Mac that's option or on a uh, PC that'll be alt and then click the add layer mask button it's going to add a black layer mask and hide this layer. So again, just a reminder, if, if the idea of layers and masking is uh, a bit new to you, then definitely check out that intro to layers and masking video that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so yeah, now that we've got this layer mask uh, added to the bright layer, we can take a, a brush tool with a white foreground, and I usually like to start at around a 30% opacity on the brush strength there. And also a hardness of zero is quite important. 
And now I'm going to increase my brush size. So you can do that using the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard. So that's just a quick shortcut there to increase or decrease the size of the brush. So the left and right square bracket keys, I should say. Um, so they're the ones just above your enter or return key on the keyboard. And so now I just need to brush into the layer mask, make sure the layer mask itself is selected, not the layer like this. So make sure the layer mask is selected with the white brush. And now wherever I brush in the image, that is where the bright exposure is going to start to show through. So let's just do some sort of large sweeping brush strokes here to, to blend the brighter foreground in. Now it's going to get a little bit more tricky up here as I get closer to this, uh, this cliff top here because I don't want to brush over into the sky. Um, otherwise, you know, the effect of that will be that I'm going to have like a glowing edge to the top of the uh, cliffs here. So I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush and then brush along the edge here. Now one way to get a bit more accurate um, so that we can uh, brush all the way up to the edge of the cliffs without going over into the sky would be to uh, load a selection or if we want to get really kind of advanced then we can use luminosity masks but you know really that is a tutorial for another day so I won't go into that right now. Um, you know, over time as I build out this series of videos, then you know, I'll have that uh, that tutorial available, or you can check out the existing playlist that I've got uh, just in the description below the video. Uh, so, okay, now I think we're pretty much already where we want to be for this. So let's just compare the dark layer now. So I'm just going to disable the bright layer and now re-enable the bright layer and we can see that we're actually seeing the, uh, the the bright layer here in the foreground and in the cliffs but the dark sky from the dark layer remains and so really uh, you know this is about it when it comes to kind of the most simple form of exposure blending in your uh, in your workflow so if you've taken bracketed exposures you've got two exposures and your edges between what you want to be blending so in this case this edge between the sky and the cliffs and then along the horizon is quite straightforward um, you know it's not too much of a task to kind of brush right up to the edges there I mean it's not 100% perfect but um, you know for this beginner level um, of exposure blending is going to do just fine and then you know once you get a bit of practice using this method you can move on to the uh, more advanced stuff so uh, yeah I think really uh, from this point in the workflow you would then you know go on to process uh, adjust the colors add contrast and uh, you know give your image a bit more kind of oomph and just a bit more of a refined polished look and feel and if you uh, if you want to download my uh, six stage workflow PDF that will guide you through that entire start to finish process then I'll put a link in the description below the video here and in the meantime I will be off putting together the pieces uh, to complete the rest of this video series